Apple's March 2021 event was supposed to happen as reported by multiple high-profile leakers, but it didn't. John Prosser is now saying that Apple will have an April event instead, but instead of Apple confirming the April event, they um, confirmed WWDC, <laughs> which is actually happening on June the 7th. So, without any further ado, here are seven things to expect. First things first, we gotta talk about the invite itself, and that's because Apple usually leaves hints in these at what some of the products that they'll be unveiling during the event will be. So this is how the WWC 2021 invite looks like. We have this lady here that mimics Craig's meme <laughs> from the uh, M1 Mac event from last year. Uh, she's wearing glasses in which you can see the MacBook screen reflected alongside some of the stock apps. Apple does actually have a video of this, which you can get by opening the developer.apple.com page. Now I have recorded this to see if there were any hints at anything, but I couldn't really see anything that stood out to me aside from maybe this weird app next to Xcode. I haven't seen this icon before anywhere, so um, maybe it's like a brand new first party Apple app, but again, maybe it's not. So let me know in the comments if you guys know what this app is. Now, aside from this, we of course have the Mac itself, which seems to be a MacBook Air, same model that Craig used in that famous video. Uh, the only odd thing about this is that the Air looks to be a bit thinner than the actual MacBook Air, as it doesn't seem to have that underside that we're all familiar with. Also, the front bit is thicker than a usual MacBook Air, which is a bit strange. So who knows, maybe this is actually a redesigned MacBook Air. But to be honest, I don't think so. I think it's just the way they modeled this. I don't think this points to any new MacBook Air redesign. Although we have had some recent reports on this saying that it might happen in 2021. But I honestly don't think that this is actually hinted at here. However, I do think that I might actually have something for you here. You see, Apple didn't just post one event tease, they posted a few. And all of them feature people with glasses on, which is a bit strange and a bit intriguing. Not only that, but it could be that the apps reflected in the glasses aren't actually a reflection of the Mac screen, but they are actually running on the glasses themselves. Therefore, this could be a hint at the Apple glasses, which is the first product that we might actually see at this event, or at least some more hints towards it. Do watch our most recent video on that here, by the way. However, if you have already watched it, then you probably know that the Apple glasses aren't rumored to come out until at least 2023, and that the Apple VR headset is the one that we'll see before that in 2022. So this could potentially be Apple just teasing the glasses and then giving developers an API that they can use right away to make apps for it in time for when the VR headset releases next year. However, they even teased the Apple glasses in 2020 at WWDC 2020, where in one of the invites, uh, one of the persons there actually was wearing glasses, the one in the middle, and um, the glasses had a notification icon on them, which was really, really strange. But we all know that Apple WWDC ended up being all about Apple's transition to their own processors on the Macs, and we never got to see anything regarding the glasses themselves. Therefore, I predict this to have a 5% chance of actually happening. Now, something that has a higher chance of happening is, uh, you know, you guys subscribing to the channel by clicking that subscribe button for more awesome Leaks Rumors episodes like this one hopefully is. Oh, and that 14-inch Mac Pro redesign also has a higher chance of happening too. We've made a bunch of videos on this already, we've made concepts, and we do know that Apple will actually be launching the next generation of MacBooks this year, designed specifically for the new M1X slash M2 processors. The most recent report on its release date comes from Nikkei in early March, who claims that mass production of the two new MacBooks will begin in the second half of the year, as opposed to May or June, like it was previously reported. What this means is that we would most likely see these in November at a Mac-focused event. However, if the schedule changes, Apple's only chance of actually introducing these MacBooks at an event would be the 2021 WWDC event in June, as the September events will be focused on the iPhones. Therefore, I'm giving this a 40% chance of happening in June. But something that doesn't need to have a higher chance of happening in June is a brand new iMac. We've seen how this is supposed to look like based on John Prosser's leak, and how they would come in multiple colors. But since that report, we've actually had some pretty big updates. For example, a potential iMac running on Apple Silicon has been discovered in an Xcode crash log 
pointed towards Apple already being in the late stages of testing their new iMacs. Not only that, but Apple has discontinued the 512GB and the 1TB SSD configurations of the 4K 21.5 inch iMac. They don't normally do that unless a new model is just around the corner. They've also recently discontinued the iMac Pro and on top of that, two recent references of unreleased iMacs have surfaced in macOS Big Sur which were identified as iMac 21.1 and iMac 21.2 with the codenames J456 and J457. 2019 was the most recent year where we had both the 21.5 inch and the 27 inch iMacs updated. And that's when we had model numbers 19.1 and 19.2. So it is pretty safe to assume that these 21.1 and 21.2 identifiers actually refer to both sizes of the iMac rather than just a 21 inch model. And the chance of seeing this iMac at WWDC is, in my opinion, around 70%. Now, in terms of the software releases that we do expect to see, the first one is, of course, iOS 15 to which I'm giving a 100% chance of actually happening. And that's because Apple has been releasing new versions of iOS yearly since 2007. In terms of what features to expect, surprisingly, we've barely had any iOS 15 leaks, which usually points towards a lack of major features and they focus towards performance improvements instead. In fact, the only report that I've seen regarding iOS 15 is from French website iPhone Soft which claims that iOS 15 will drop support for the iPhone success and the iPhone SE 1 with the earliest iPhone supported being the iPhone 7. Also, the iPod Touch 7 generation, which I actually bought recently, two of them actually, um, video explaining that, I promise, coming at some point. Now, that iPod Touch will still be supported as it runs on Apple's A10 chip, just like the iPhone 7. When it comes to what features to expect, aside from performance improvements, do you expect to see some refinements to the changes that iOS 14 brought to the table, such as widgets and especially the app library, which just seems to be heavily overlooked by Apple. I mean, the idea that it's all the way to the right when it could have easily been implemented as a swipe down action instead, replacing the Siri suggestions, that just beats me to this very day. Speaking of the app library, this is one of the main features that's expected to come to iPadOS 15, as for some reason it was missing from iPadOS 14. Same applies to the widgets. Whilst on the iPhone you can add on-screen widgets, on the iPad you can only have them in the sidebar of the home screen, which is really weird. This is also expected to be added in with iPadOS 15, to which I also predict a 100% chance of making an appearance at WWDC 2021. French tech website iPhone Soft reported that the iPad Mini 4, the iPad Air 2, and the iPad 5 would all drop support for iPadOS 15, as each of these, they all have an older A8, A8X, and A9 processor. Other changes are expected to be Apple Pencil improvements, given by the recent Apple Pencil leaks that might actually suggest Apple adding a color sampling option, which would allow you to sample a color from the real world onto your iPad with the tip of the Apple Pencil, which would be really, really cool. Aside from this, the majority of the changes are also expected to be performance optimizations, just like with iOS 15. Then we have macOS 12, to which I predict a 100% chance of happening. Now, macOS Big Sur, was really one of the biggest changes the Mac has ever received, as it added Apple Silicon support, it redesigned the icons, it redesigned the UI, just to make it look more like iOS. And usually after a big redesign, the next few years focus on performance improvements and very minor feature updates. We know that macOS 12 is 100% happening, not just by the fact that we've almost always had a macOS release every single year, uh, but because references of Apple's upcoming software versions were visible in a WebKit code snippet that was leaked by an alleged Apple employee who works on the WebKit technology. This shows a reference to not just macOS 12, but iOS 15 as well. And I'm not even joking when I'm saying that this is the only leak that we've had in terms of macOS 12. Literally zero aside of this, which makes me think that this is either a very small update or Apple has severely tightened security to prevent leaks from happening, which this recent report from the information does indeed point towards. And then we have the most exciting announcement, or <laughs> probably not, uh, it's um, WatchOS. WatchOS 8, uh, which also has a 100% chance of happening given previous years and just like macOS 12, we've also had zero leaks on this. Now, we do know that Apple plans to add a glucose monitoring sensor to the Apple Watch Series 7, on which we've actually done a recent video right here 
definitely give it a watch. We're also talking about the brand new redesign that's supposedly coming to the new Apple Watch. Uh, but that's only coming out in September, so until then, it's likely that we'll just get the usual sort of watchOS updates with a few new watch faces and some minor tweaks here and there. Yeah, nothing major this year. But let me know in the comments the announcement that you're excited for the most. In my case, it's definitely the Apple glasses, but the chance of that actually happening is really, really small. So probably the MacBook, if that doesn't happen, then obviously macOS 12. That's the one that I'm excited for the most. But yeah, give us a like if you've enjoyed it to so let us know. And definitely subscribe if you want to see more Elixir Wars episodes like this one and more cool tech videos like this one hopefully was. This has been Zenoff Tech. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.